Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 112, and the name is Game Life. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This looks like an NES style game controller. This looks like an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. This looks like some 1.8K SMD1206 resistors. These are two NES game controller sockets. This is one Axial lead resistor and the value in this case doesn't matter, I don't think. We'll find out later. This is a female 2x20 Raspberry Pi header. This is a WaveShare RP2040 Pi Zero development board. This is the Adafruit Charlie Plex LED Matrix Bonnet. This is the Piconess Fat PCB or P Hat PCB. This is an 8 gig micro SD card. Here are two randomly selected stickers uh, from the math and science collection they have, and these will be randomly selected. So what you get may not match these, but this is a cool math one. And there was a cool science one here. Last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 112 collectible reference card with a cool glider gun Game of Life thing there on the front and on the back we've got a picture of our 2040 board with some pinouts. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. I got a design ready? PCBWay makes it easy to bring it to life. Upload your files, pick your options, place your order. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just tinkering for fun, PCBWay delivers quality boards fast. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. So this Instructable doesn't dive straight into soldering. It kicks things off with a look at artificial life. And there's a cool video here, and it starts out with Conway's Game of Life, and it goes into other cellular automata. If you've never seen that stuff before, or if you've only heard the name, I really recommend checking out that video they linked to in the guide. It's short, solid, and honestly, it's one of my favorite little rabbit holes to fall into. Okay, our first hands-on activity here in this box is checking out our 2040 Pi Zero development board. So we're gonna get that out, plug it into USB-C, and we're gonna use the USB port, not the one that's labeled PIO USB, and the board should power on with a red power LED. And as you can see here, it looks like that's okay. Now next, the instructor tells us that we should hold the boot button while we hit the reset button. And when you do that, back on your desktop, you should see an available drive pop up. Now I'm gonna assume for this next piece that you already have the Arduino IDE installed. If not, I think you can handle that. It's a pretty straightforward process. And next we're gonna need to configure Earl Philhauer's Arduino core for RP2040. The link in the instructable provides a good set of instructions for how to add that board support into Arduino and what steps to follow to get that to show up. It's not too bad to follow. Shouldn't have any trouble getting that going. And this is where you would find that. Now in my case, I've played with this before, so you can see I've already got it installed. But if I hadn't, that button would say install right here. And then we're gonna need to get the Adafruit fork of the Pico DVI library. And you can find that here like this. Next, you're gonna download this Conway Life DVI sketch that is linked in the Instructable. And then within Arduino, you're gonna to go to Tools Board, Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040, WaveShare RP2040 Pi Zero. Then you're gonna to go to Tools, Port, UF2 Port. And if it's still not in the state from earlier, you can hold down the boot button and hit that reset button. And then you're gonna compile and push that sketch to the RP2040 Pi Zero like this. 
And next we're gonna use that supplied mini HDMI to HDMI connector. And we're gonna hook this to a monitor or a capture device and let's see what this code does. So here you can see how the code does an initialization where it has a glider drawn to a pseudo random location when it calls the init multi glider 50. And in the instructable, it also tells us we could go in here and comment that out and then uncomment the init random. And that's what this looks like when it runs. There are several other exercises and ideas that you can kind of expand on within this sketch that are contained within the instructable. And I invite you to check those out and uh, comment below if you did anything cool with that. Okay, for our next hands-on bit here, we're gonna need to get our 2040 board and flip it over. And this is where these surface mount resistors are gonna come into play. We're gonna attack them to GP2 and GP3 and tie them over to the three volt line. And those are gonna be pull-up resistors. And we need those so the I squared C stuff that we're gonna be using next will work properly. That is not really implemented in this particular dev board. So we're gonna hack these on here to give us that functionality. And you can see this is where we use that lead from the resistor and we're just kind of using it as a jumper. So the value did not matter. So next I grab this latest version of CircuitPython as instructed here. And I kind of went out of order a little bit compared to the instructable. I kind of grabbed all my files at one time, you'll see here. Next I grab this Adafruit zip bundle that was linked in the instructable. Then I followed this link and snagged this font file from this GitHub. Then I grab this scrolling text.py file. Then I powered the board back up and did the little button combination we've been using several times so far and got that to pop up with a drive on the machine. Then I did a drag and drop of the circuit Python file over to that and that copied over and then it rebooted and then it was actually running the circuit Python. Then I copied that font file into the root directory of the CircuitPy drive. Then I dropped the specified lib files over into the lib directory of the CircuitPy drive that were from the example.zip. Then I opened up the scrolling text Python file in Thani, and you can use Mew or any other editors. There's links in the instructable about that, but I copied scrolling text and then I put it into the body of the code.py that's in the root of the circuit python thing there if it's code.py it'll auto run on boot now we're going to go back over here we're going to install the hat onto the 2040 board then we're going to give it some power and see what happens and here we can see our cool message it's scrolling across the charlie pixel bonnet there And you can see pretty easily here in the code where you need to change it if you want to change what that message says. So that's pretty fun. Okay, next, just like I did with the scrolling text code, I grabbed this Conway's Life Python code and I copied and pasted it into code.py in the root of the circuit Python drive that pops up. And then we save that and boot it up with that and we'll see what that gives us. That's pretty cool. And then we go into the code again and make this suggested edit. And then we see what that looks like when it runs. Pretty darn cool. As you've just seen on the Charlie Plex LED shield, Charlie isn't just the name they're using. Charlie Plexing, a smart technique that lets you drive lots of LEDs with only a few pins by setting them to high or low or high impedance states. Curious to dive in to the clever math and wiring behind it? Check out the Wikipedia link in the description for a friendly walkthrough of how it all works. Okay, the next thing we're gonna mess with here is this Pico Ness Fat or P hat. Basically, it's a hat for the 2040 that will let us connect up NES style controllers. Pretty straightforward, we just got the PCB, the two connectors we're gonna put in there. They can be a little bit fiddly, but they're not that bad to get in there.
And then we've got the two by 20 header that goes on the opposite side of the board than the controller ports. The next thing I did was remove that Charlie Plex hat from the 2040 so I could get access to those buttons I would need in order to get the next bit of code on here for this next project. Then I took this opportunity to do a little cleaning of the soldering I'd done so far. So next I went back to the Instructable and found the link and followed it to the Pico Info Nest Plus repository. And then I uh, followed the instructions here. I go into releases and I basically look for the latest release that matches the 2040 file as specified in the Instructable. And next I got a little bit out of order as I have a bunch in this one. And I went ahead and went looking for some NES ROMs. And uh, I'm not gonna show you exactly what I did, but you can see what I Googled there and it's easy enough to do the same thing I just did there. And make sure you only use ROMs you find online of uh, real cartridges that you own, okay? We don't want any uh, hanky-panky here. So I did the familiar button combo on the 2040 board to get it to pop up and be ready to take a firmware. And I got that, then I just did a copy and paste instead of a drag and drop over to the Pi and that put this Pico Ness firmware on it. So next I got the supplied SD card out of the packaging and the instructions recommend that you format that FAT32 and I would also echo that same thing. It comes pre-formatted, but it seems like nine times out of 10, these pre-formatted ones like this, they always are a little bit weird and then they straighten up as soon as you actually do a reformat on them yourself. So I would recommend doing that. But anyway, I got that, I put it in this adapter and then I copied over some of my legally owned NES ROMs. I advise you to do the same. Then I removed the SD card from the reader and stuck it into the 2040 board. And then I stuck the hat on there. Then I plugged in one of the controllers the video connection and some power and fired things up. And you can see here when I fired up, you get this cool little splash screen and then you get this menu and it will show up the files you've got on your SD card that you can try to load from. And you'll see here, I'll kind of speed things up a little bit and I load up a few games and play around with them. And you may see some little streaks going across. And I think that is due in part to the Extron device I was using to capture some of this. You'll see later on when I show some direct to screen video that those aren't present. And I'll also show you the sound when I do that because this device does not pass through the sound. My capture device that is. This thing works perfectly fine. And this is when I finally realized that I didn't have the controller in port one. So I fixed that and then of course right away, uh, things worked as expected. Notice it's not doing that flashing and stuff when it's not going through the Xtron, so that's interesting. Looks pretty clean here. I bet the sound works. As we approach the end of the Instructable here, it's worth noting the DEF CON Franklin Project and its Hacker's Almanac. These initiatives are about turning the cutting edge research from DEF CON into actionable insights for policymakers and providing volunteer cybersecurity support to critical sectors like water utilities and schools. It's a testament to how the hacker community can contribute to public safety and policy. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 112 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment around June 27th, 2025. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a US shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still Hackerbox 112s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway, you want to get one, check them out. Or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.